Hi everyone and welcome to another video by BioTeach, this time focusing on antibodies in terms of structure and function. This video is relevant for A-level biology for the AQA board, but it may also be useful for BTEC units which focus on immunity such as the diseases and infections unit. So antibodies are large Y-shaped proteins made by plasma cells which destroy specific antigens. If you haven't already watched my video on B-cell immunity or humoral immunity, then you've got to go back and watch that before you watch this one so it will make sense when you watch them together. Antibodies and antigens play key roles in the response of the immune system. We know antigens are foreign molecules which promote a specific immune response. Antigens include pathogenic microbes and their toxins, as well as things like pollen grains, blood surface molecules, even proteins on transplanted tissues. Antibodies are proteins that are made in response to antigens. They're secreted from the B cells into the plasma where they can recognize and bind to and also help destroy antigens. There are numerous classes of antibodies which you don't necessarily need to know about, but the key thing is that each of them will play a different role in the immune system response. Each type of antibody is specific to only one particular antigen. So you've got this diagram over here of an antibody. You have to be able to recognise what an antibody looks like from a diagram, which could be quite similar to this one that's given to you in an exam. The antibody is actually composed of four chains which are joined together by disulfide bonds which then form this kind of Y-shaped structure. We say that it's got two heavy chains or two light chains but essentially you're talking about the purple chains being the long chains or the heavy chains and the pinky reddish ones are being the two light chains. Most of the molecule is made up of constant regions which are the same for all antibodies of the same class. There is this hinge region which connects the light and the heavy chains together. This allows the ch two chains to open and close. The variable regions form the antigen binding sites. Each antibody can bind two antigen molecules. The antigen binding sites will differ from one type of antibody to another. The huge number of antibody types is possible only because most of the antibody structure is constant. The variable portion is coded by a relatively small number of genes that rearrange randomly to produce an estimated 100 million different combinations. So I wanted to give you an example of an exam question that focuses on antibodies. So this one here gives you a diagram of antibody and, and there's a two part question. Part A is to say what the evidence is from the diagram that the antibody has a quaternary structure and that's for one mark. And part B says the scientists use this antibody to detect antigens on a bacterium that causes ulcers and you have to explain why that antibody will only detect this particular antigen. So feel free to pause the video now to give this question a go. OK, so here's the mark scheme. For the first part, you needed to recognise that the antibody has two long chains and the two short chains held together. So there are four polypeptide chains and therefore it's a quaternary structure. The second part of the question needed you to say that the antibody binding site has a specific structure on the binding site, which is complementary to the antigens, which will help you form an antibody antigen complex. So hopefully that's simple enough for you guys to understand and to apply. So this part of the video touches on how the antibodies will work to stop antigens or pathogens. Antibodies will work in different ways. The first way I want to talk about is something known as agglutination. This basically means that the antibodies will stick lots of pathogens together to stop them from spreading throughout the body. Each antibody has two binding sites, so they can bind to the same antigen more than once, kind of causing them to clump together a bit like this particular diagram. The red blobs are the antigens and the black slash purple Y shapes are the antibodies. And you can see how one antibody might be bound to two separate antigens, but then another antibody will also bind to the same antigen that causes this kind of clotting or clumping. The second way is by neutralization. They do this by attaching to the binding sites on the pathogen and therefore stopping the pathogen from binding to the cells, hence stopping them from entering the host cell. The third way is that they increase phagocytosis. They're able to coat the pathogen and it makes them easier for the phagocytes to bind to them and therefore engulf them. 
Number four is by cell lysis. So some antibodies can work with other molecules to perforate holes into the pathogen's cell walls, which then causes the cell to take on water by osmosis and therefore lies. And finally, we've got the reduction in mobility by attaching to the flagella of bacteria as an example. This makes the flagella less active and stops the bacteria from moving around trying to infect host cells. Okay, so that's all I have for you. I hope that was super useful to help you understand the process of antibodies and how they function. If you've got any comments or questions, please leave them as a comment under this video and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thank you so much for watching and make sure you check out my channel for similar content. Bye for now.